today's podcast, I'm talking to Veronika Bodachenko, an experienced conversion rate optimization manager who takes optimization beyond the normal boundaries of CRO. In a world where marketers are having to adopt to the rigors of digital marketing, Veronica believes that there's still a lot to learn outside of A-B testing and CRO, where optimization of the whole digital experience needs to be considered more fully. Veronica, you recently joined the Fitch Group as digital marketing specialist, and prior to that, you were a conversion rate optimization manager at BuzzBingo. But I'm really more interested in your work as a digital optimization trainer. What was it that compelled you to get involved with training others, and how did it come about? Um, morning, John. Thank you for the invite. Um, I think despite my title at Fitch Group or the one at BuzzBingo, um, what I do is digital optimization. And the reason why I um, wanted to train others is because I realized there are a lot of misconceptions around digital optimization. Some call it conversion rate optimization, some call it um, experimentation. There are other terms out there, but I think the idea is that you have to test and validate everything you do um, with your product. And there are a lot of so-called gurus, there's a lot of content out there, and a lot of it can be a bit misleading. And I think anyone can, any company can buy a testing and personalization tool and start running experiments, testing button colors and all sorts of bits and bobs. But personally, I don't think that's the right approach. And I think the most important investment a company can make in terms of um, CRO or digital optimization is not necessarily in the tool, but in the skills in the team. So I, w- I would agree with you. I, I think it's a combination of the knowledge, the expertise and the hypothesis, if you like, the gaining hypothesis as well as the tool itself. So there's a balance. And I think it's probably, I won't say 50-50, but probably more in the experience uh, than in the tool itself. But you've got um, a couple of accreditations from the SIM and the Institute of Direct and Digital Marketing. Do you believe that those accreditations are an essential part of a marketer's career or does experience rate more highly? Um, I think for marketing, yes, certainly um, I found them incredibly useful. But when it comes to digital optimization, I think that they're not enough. They, they teach more digital marketing um concepts um so that experience that knowledge is great but to do proper digital optimization i think other qualifications are useful and those are around product management and understanding agile um, and seeing where validation and experimentation sits within product uh, development but uh, are those in a normal environment, are those not siloed places? So, for instance, those people that are in product marketing or product management don't necessarily understand pure marketing. So is it trying to be able to create a, a person with lots and lots of expertise in one individual or do you think that's still separate? I think, in my view, I think that is exactly the problem. These silos mean that um, each team sees, you know, sees something as um, very limited. And then I think companies need someone who understands um, all these different areas and can support what I call the product-led growth. Let's take an example here. So say there's a stakeholder in the business and they come up with an idea to change something on the website. Um, actually, let's be more specific. Let's say they want to replace a big block of text with a carousel, mm-hmm. which in a way makes sense, right? Who wants to read a whole lot of text? It just makes, it, it makes sense. Cool. So they send yeah. the story to the product owner and then the product owner um, consults with the CRO specialist and they brief UX to design it. Happy days, then it gets built as a test. And if it is successful, then the developers would build it and release it to production as sort of the default. Mm-hmm. Okay, so far, everything sounds great. 
they followed a robust process and everyone's happy. But this test was deemed successful because it it won on one KPI, on their on the primary KPI. But if that carousel adds, say, I don't know, one, two seconds to the load time on mobile, and again, let's let's suppose that doesn't exceed the performance budget that the dev set, that will actually have a detrimental effect on the SEO score, which in the long run can drive less traffic and it's going to have an impact on conversion rate, on the user experience. And also, and again, this is just an example, you know, in the long run, it can affect even the retention rate if the site is getting slower. And this is this is just an example, but it just shows how something that someone does in their area, in one silo, um, can have a knock-on effect on so many other things. Um, so that's why I think it's really important to have someone who understands all these, all, all these links. But if you add more KPIs to a particular test, does that not potentially remove the agileness of being able to do experimentation? Yeah, it's not necessarily about um, adding KPIs. It's just, um, and I'm going to use a buzzword here, it's just having a more holistic view um, and understanding if someone gets some, something changes here it can impact all these other things because nowadays it's so difficult to draw the line between CRO and SEO and UX and so on and especially I think with Google um, with the web vitals and Google um, seeing web vital is such an important metric for um, for them now and for SEO and so on. I think it really sent a strong signal in the market. It's not about optimizing um, for search engines now. It, it really is about the user experience um, because that's what web vitals measure. Um, so again, if you think about it, Web Vitals, well, it's the infrastructure team that ha- can have an impact on that. Um, and then it's the developers that have an impact on that. The, the, the people who upload stuff on the website, marketers, and, and so on. All of those things can impact uh, the, the SEO score and so on. So it's really, really difficult nowadays to think, um, you know, to, to really have this kind of siloed view and just taking that a little step further and, and uh, making a different analogy, I think that's a bit like 3D chess. So if you've ever played chess, you know, chess is a very complicated game on itself, full of strategy, tactics and all that. But 3D chess is actually having three games on the go all at once, potentially. Now, when you look at what we're trying to be able to do in the experimentation world, we're trying to play 3D chess, but trying to make the rules simpler so that it makes more people adopt experimentation to get the best experience for their for their website and their clients so i'm thinking that yes we have to kind of go into a much more holistic view of what that is but that needs to be balanced with regard to getting tests done and seeing results and making changes that improve the overall value. So, so I'm with you on, on, on one set, but I can't see that it should be blockading potentially or, or slowing down elements of experimentation. Oh, absolutely. But I think it's better to run less tests and better uh, planned and researched rather than running lots of tests and then getting some results that are um, either uh, misleading or inaccurate and then uh, changing your product in that way so there's then, then obviously it needs to be a balance you do want to you're listening to the short version of this podcast. To listen to the full version, visit your favorite podcast player and search for Web Trends Optimize or The Big Lift. 